everyone. Hello and welcome into day three of the Minnesota Vikings offseason. As we progress through this week, we're going to be talking more and more about the changes that need to happen going forward for the 2023 season to get the Minnesota Vikings on the path to success because right now it feels like they're stuck in neutral. So we're going to begin these discussions of changes with the most important position on the field, and that is the quarterback position, because I think that is the most fair. Uh, so, of course, this is going to be a Kirk Cousins episode. This is everybody's uh, favorite topic of debate since 2018. Now, I want to preface this with the idea that I don't want this video to be about pettiness. I want this video to be about reality. So this video is not about throwing short of the sticks on fourth and eight with the playoffs on the line. Uh, this is not a video about sign, uh, signing a quarterback to an $84 million guaranteed contract in 2018, thinking you're one piece away from the Super Bowl, only to subsequently go 8-7-1 and one and miss the playoffs because you can't beat the Bears at home at the end of the season. Uh, this video is not about poorly performing in primetime. This video is not about uh, getting demolished by the Eagles, Cowboys, and whoever else this season. This video is not about... Uh, one playoff win in five years uh, after earning $155 million from the Minnesota Vikings. It's not about an 11-year career that has resulted in $200 million in earned salary resulting in one playoff win. This video is not about any of those things. Uh, my son concurs in the background. So what is this video about? This video is about reality. What are we going to do right now? What are we going to do going forward? And the harsh reality is, for a lot of people, myself included, is that Kirk Cousins is going to be your starting quarterback for 2023, and there's uh, there's multiple layers to this, and why that and, and why that is. Um, layer number one is the no trade clause. Uh, Kirk Cousins has been given control, which last year I said was stupid. the The extension is one thing, but to give him full control of his own destiny is just outrageous. Like how how could they have done that? Because now you find yourself in a situation where you pushed all your chips in last year. You traded a second round for T.J. Hawkinson. Now you don't have a second round pick. Uh, you, you basically said, you know, fooey on the rebuild part of our competitive rebuild plan because you're like, hey, we've got all these wins. We're, we're, we're going to we're going to make a playoff run. So let's let's go all in. And now you're facing down the barrel of reality in that your defense is terrible. The interior of your offensive line is bad. All of these aging veterans need to go. So you really, really have to rebuild if you're going to take this uh, job as an NFL franchise front office seriously. But you have no money. And you can't get rid of the biggest contract on your books because he has a no trade clause. So he's not going anywhere. That's just, that's the bread and butter of it. Um, the other thing that's not going to happen is that they're probably not going to draft a rookie quarterback this year in the first round unless they make a trade up or somebody falls in their lap. Um, the, the top four quarterbacks in the draft, in my opinion, this year are Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Will Levis, and Anthony Richardson. Those are going to be your four first round quarterbacks uh, in, for 2023. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, forget about it. You are not in range to get any of those three guys. Those guys are going top 10 all guaranteed. Um, so you missed out on that opportunity by having a, a, a better than expected season playing with house money. Anthony Richardson is an interesting prospect out of Florida. I think that um, he has kind of the skill set and athleticism that a uh, offensive minded head coach would want to bring in and see if he could mold that clay into a serious elite competitor at the next level. Um, so, and the thing that's nice about Anthony Richardson is that he's mobile. He does some running around. Um, my, my two top quarterbacks in the draft would be Will Levis and Anthony Richardson, just based off of mobility alone. You know, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, they can move around, but um, they're more, they're, they're more um, polished passers, if I could put it that way. So Anthony Richardson is probably going in the top 15 just because people are going to look at him and think, hey, I can take those skills and I can turn that into something. So uh, we're going to miss out there. And it doesn't matter anyway, because you really have pigeonholed yourself into really needing defense because, you know, the sins of our fathers, Rick Spielman and Mike Zimmer spent a couple of drafts just absolutely missing on defensive players year in and year out. Because since 2015, as I said in the last in the yesterday's video, who have you gotten in the draft defensively that is still here contributing at, at, at a pro level? None of them. Absolutely none of them. Um, so the 2015 draft was uh, what was able to keep this train going. And uh, it has uh, it has since derailed because all these guys are now aging veterans that are going to need to go. So the, the, the reality of the situation is that I think Kirk Cousins is going to be the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings for 2023. And it 
bums me out. Not because he's not good. I don't want this to be a, a, a comment section filled with, well, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have 13 wins. If it wasn't for a lot of things, we wouldn't have had 13 wins, okay? That, that argument is just neither here nor there. Um, it's not because he's not good. It's just because the resume doesn't add up, guys. Um, he's going to be another year older. Uh, he's another year closer to father time catching up to him. I don't care who you are other than Tom Brady. It catches up to us all. Keeping keeping up with these one to two year extensions to end his career is something you would do with a Ben Roethlisberger. It's something you would do with an Eli Manning. It's something that you would do with a Drew Brees. Uh, as long as your arm's not cooked like his was at the end of his career. Uh, Kirk Cousins just doesn't have the intangibles to keep this going. Um, and, and the thing is that if you look at... And here's another harsh dose of reality. If you look at the playoffs this year, how many quarterbacks are on rookie contracts with teams that are still alive or just got in at all? And how many quarterbacks are on um, uh, uh, deals that are now extensions because they're former first round picks? The highest paid quarterback in this playoff bracket this year was Patrick Mahomes. Guess who number two was? Kirk Cousins. And with, 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 the, with the talent that Patrick Mahomes has, he could take a team that is not necessarily built... Um, to be better than the sum of its parts, it's the fact that he's just otherworldly. And Kirk Cousins is not otherworldly. He's just not. He doesn't have an MVP. He doesn't have a Super Bowl ring. The resume doesn't match up, uh, even though their careers are quite different in terms of length. Um, and then you have all these other quarterbacks under rookie deals, Daniel Jones, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, and I'm missing a few because I can't rattle off everything from memory at this moment. But that's that's the concept. That is the meta. And for you fellow uh gamers out there, if you play video games, you'll understand this analogy where if you were to play Halo, uh, Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Call of Duty, uh, Warzone, every so often there is a time period in these games for multiplayer where there is a meta. If you're not using certain things, you're not going to be competitive. And the current meta in the NFL, and this is just, this is just how it is. This isn't me saying um, this is what it needs to be. It's just, it's just how it is. It's reality. Um, remember, reality is the, the theme of today's video. The reality is, is that you either bank on, a, you either hit on a first round quarterback, like a Patrick Mahomes, a Joe Burrow, a Josh Allen, or you get a guy on a rookie deal who's pretty good or good enough, Trevor Lawrence, Daniel Jones, whoever, and uh, use the extra money that you're not spending on the quarterback to fill out the rest of the team. Minnesota Vikings can't currently do that. We cannot rebuild an entire defense as much as everybody has been crying about that for three, four years. Remember, this is another offseason where we have all the same problems. Uh, the interior offensive line is bad. How do we fix it? The defense is bad. How do we fix it? We need another wide receiver. Guys, it's all the same problems because we don't have the cap space to go out and hit splash free agent signings, and we've been whiffing on the draft for year after year after year. Quasi Adolfo Mensa's first draft, not good. Lewis Seen, I know he got injured, but still didn't participate. Andrew Booth, I know he's been injured, didn't participate. Who else was drafted this year that contributed? Maybe Asamoah, but you know, he's got injury concerns too. A Caleb Evans, too many concussions. Um, it's just, you have to start hitting on your draft picks if you're going to pay a quarterback the amount of money that we're doing with Kirk Cousins right now. So to summarize this dose of reality, Kirk Cousins is likely going to be the quarterback for 2023. I don't see a way that they can move off of it unless they take my advice from yesterday's video and get uber aggressive because let's face it, the salary cap is kind of a myth. Um, it can be manipulated in a way that works to your favor. So if they wanted to figure out something, they could. They just need a trade partner that's willing to work with them. That, that is the basis of this. And there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks this year, probably 12 of them. Um, there's just a lot of them aren't in range to get one of the top four guys in the draft. And then after that, I don't know why you're drafting a quarterback at all, because they're going to be a project quarterback that probably doesn't pan out. So, uh, it remains to be seen what the rest of the league does, but I think Kirk Cousins is your starting quarterback for 2023. And my hope is that they let him play out on the final year of this deal and then move on. Um, if they do a restructure, which they might have to, cause they got to figure out how to save some money somewhere. Um, I'm going to be severely disappointed because we're already paying him two years beyond his uh, this final year coming up to not be on this team. He's going to make $12 million to not be on the Minnesota Vikings in 2024. So we got to figure something out, but uh, the harsh dose of reality is Kirk Cousins will be the starting quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to predict that right here, right now. We'll have some trade discussions as they pop up throughout the season when the rumor mill starts churning, when the draft gets closer, but I'm pretty confident in that prediction that 
Kirk Cousins will be the opening day starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings in 2023. So that's going to do it for me today. I might chime in a little bit later. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.